You listen to the AZ Wildcats podcast brought to you by DraftKings. Great deal going on. You put down the deposit, you get up to $1,000 in free plays. All right. Now joined by one of Arizona's first families already, Mr. Les Fafita, father of a U of A freshman quarterback, Noah Fafita. How you doing, coach? I'm good. I'm good, man. Mike, I appreciate you uh, having us on and having me on. Um, you know, like I was telling you earlier, I, I know you wanted spam and eggs um, to get on here, but, you know, she's not a uh, She's camera shy, even though it doesn't seem like it on Twitter. Uh, you know, she's shy to get on the camera. So I told her, you know, I'd, I'd honor the request. You guys have done a lot of great things for all our kids, uh, right. you know, especially Noah. But, you know, we're, we're appreciative. We'll get we'll uh, we'll we'll get to the whole family unit here because a lot of people, like I said, you guys are rock stars already here. So we got a bunch of uh, stuff to get to. But I wanted to talk a little bit about you first. You know, you obviously uh, came up. You know, trained Noah, worked with him a lot. What? Uh, tell a little bit about Les Fafita's background before we get into Noah's. Um, so, you know, my 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 uh, background is unique in the sense that, um, you know, I I'm like the prodigal son. You know, growing up, I was always talented in football, but you know, the things I hate now as a coach are some of the things that I used to do back in the days where you know I was just that guy that was always going to try to do the least and uh, get away with the most. So, um, you know, I. I kind of fell into coaching, you know, when Noah was four, I tried to put him in flag football. And um, at the time the, the, the league didn't have a coach. So they said, Hey, you can put him in, uh, but you had to coach. And, you know, that's, that's how I kind of fell into this uh, spot that I'm in. And, you know, thank God that I, I did end up coaching because a lot of the things I have in my life now are, are because of, you know, coaching Noah and, and then meeting the boys and kind of building our program and our life around that. So, um, you know, now I have a, a, a program that I run. It's called the Orange County Buckeyes. Uh, we have ages nine years old all the way up until 14. Um, and then I have a, a, a marketing and, and a media company that I that I own and co-founded um, that takes up a lot of my time. And, you know, obviously the kids that have gone through my program are, are some of our clients like Noah, T-Mac. We have a kid, David Bailey, out in, um, in Stanford, Key and Burnett um, mm -hmm. are some of our kids. So, okay. Um, so Noah, just watching him, and again, he's new, obviously, to the Arizona scene. But the one thing about him, when you watch him out there, he is very cool and collected. Has that always been kind of a trait of his? It doesn't look like anything really overwhelms him. Yeah, I think that's one of his best qualities is, um, you know, the, the way he handles pressure. Um, you know, I was telling somebody the other day that, you know, when Noah was 10, um, you know, I go, I get so frustrated with him, uh, you know, like messing up or doing the wrong things at, at, at practice that, We'd, we'd go live on the quarterback and we'd start hitting them for like the last 15, 20 minutes. And, you know, then I played them up a lot. You know, our, right. our thing was always to chase the competition. And so, you know, I think it, you know, I think just playing against great competition locally from California. And then as they got older nationally, I think it's kind of prepared it for the stage. And then, you know, playing in the Trinity, playing at Servite High School, uh, playing against the likes of Modern Day and, uh, and Bosco, you know, definitely helped the situation as well. So. Okay, what was it like? So he's in middle school, and then because it's different now than, you know, even when, you know, when you were coming up and a lot of people were, you know, going to your high school is a big thing. How did you guys decide on Servite, and was that, you know, was that something that you were going to do from day one? What was the best, uh, what was what was the decision-making process like that? No, so we, um, I was actually coaching at Los Alamitos High School at, the right. point, at that time, and, uh, you know, everything for me was going to be, he, he was going to go to, to Los Alamitos, um, modern day came in heavily trying to re recruit him because we have a lot of contacts at modern day. We practice as the Buckeyes at modern day. And, um, you know, one of my younger brothers who I named him after was at Crespi at the time. And he ended up coming back to Servite to coach at Servite. Right. And, uh, it just, you know, like he's his namesake for a reason, you know, I trust him with my son and him coming to Servite, you know, was, a, was a huge deal for us. And, uh, you know, we just decided to follow him to Servite high school. And that's how we ended up at Servite. Uh, with T-Mac and Kean and some of the other boys, uh, Jacob Manu. Um, I think 13 of them ended up going off of our eighth grade team to Servite. Uh, and, you know, things worked out for them. Was it, yeah, you could put that, just put it mildly. Was, uh, was there a point when you were coaching Noah or when you were watching Noah that you could see that he could just do things out on the field that, you know, some others couldn't? And again, I'll just go from just watching him in fall camp. You very rarely see a freshman come in and a kid who should still be a senior in high school, who again was able to command the offense. I mean, you saw in the scrim or in this uh, spring uh, scrimmage and everything, and where guys just kind of gravitate towards him. Has that always been kind of a Fafita thing? Um, you know, I, I think it kind of it, it grew as he got older. You know, Servite was uh, was big in that sense that he he was around around Darnell Arsenal, uh, mm -hmm. who was his offensive coordinator. 
um, early on. And then he got around Sean Coley, uh, who's a great, you know, um, mastermind as far as running the ball and kind of like with formations. So both of them helped in that development. I'm a defensive guy. So, you know, right. my thing is I'd rather uh, I'd rather win than my son look good. Uh, right. So those are just like our expectation. Our expectations were just, hey, you got to you know get the job done um, however it takes. And then, like I said, you know, he's got a great quarterback coach, Taylor Kelly and 3D QB family that he's been with for about five years now um, that I trust. You know, what I mean, like I don't I don't Explain try to the background that we were talking a little bit before you came on. That's a cool story. Yeah. So Taylor Kelly um, is one of the owners, along with uh, Adam Dato and uh, John Beck of 3D QBs. They're based out here in Huntington Beach. But Taylor is Noah's main quarterback coach, but he's also the offensive coordinator and QB coach at Modern Day High School, who is uh, Servite's rival. And throughout Noah's high school career, you know, Taylor was still training him weekly on, you know, like things that he messed up in the game or, or ideas or what the game plan was. So, you know, like he, I give, I give Taylor and, and 3D QB a lot of credit for, you know, Noah's development as far as mentally and, um, and physically on the field. So, you know, Taylor does has a, and still to this day, he's sending Noah texts and, and talking to him. You know, I know prior to Noah coming out there, um, you know, he had things that he talked to Doherty on and what Doherty, uh, coach Doherty wanted Noah to have, like before he got out there and, and they would work on those things. So, you know, 3D QB has like the price of like the likes of Bryce Young, um, DJ, we and LA and, you know, uh, Drew Brees was there, but you know, so they have some, 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 some QBs that they work with, but you know, they do a great job developing their guys. I was talking with a coach last, uh, uh, last year and he was talking about, this is after Noah had signed. And I said, you know, what, uh, just break down, you know, what you're going to be getting. And this is a, it's a coach on the current staff that, you know, just off record. And all he said, and all he said was, he said, you know, I don't, you're going to hear all the things about the height. I don't care if he's five, two or if he's six, four, he says, this kid can play. And not only can he play, he's going to come in here and he's going to make an impact immediately. Has that, has he just always been, has that always just kind of been a thing where, Size doesn't really matter with him because this coach and he talks with him daily certainly was spot on in what he said about Noah. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're, we're a faith, we're a family uh, of faith. So, um, you know, like size has always kind of been my hiccup too. I, I kind of was caught up with size early on. Um, like going into high school, he was only about five, six, like five, seven mm -hmm. and, uh, and nine. And now he's still, you know, me five, nine. They're trying to, you know, I told them they're trying to say he's five eleven. I was like, don't do that. You know I mean? Just say right. what you are. Just right. say what you are, man. Cause, but, um, you know, like whatever he's needed to be, he's been able to, 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 you know, I mean, whatever he needed, whatever size he needed to be or whatever, you know, he needed to be at each level he's been. So, you know, I mean, my thing for him mainly is, is, is the physical part. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my big thing for him is like, make sure you're killing yourself in the weight room, make sure you listen to TO and them and what you're doing in there. And then when it's your time, you know, I mean, it's your time. I don't want to look back. And it was the same thing in high school. Like I wasn't in a hurry for him to play early playing in the Trinity level. I just wanted, you know, when it, I want him to be prepared when it was his time to get on the field and play, it was his time and I didn't want to look back. So well, I think a lot of people are surprised too, because when you look at him and you see the way that the ball jumps out of his hand, I mean, he can, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but he can make every single throw out there. And he has a quick release that I think is fairly underrated, especially when you're dealing with a freshman in college. Yeah, and, and I, that's something that they work on is, is release, like release angles, points for him being how, you know, like how short he is. You know, he's going to have to release the ball at different angles all the time and and getting the ball out on, on time um, in rhythm. You know, it was something that we worked on early because our line wasn't the best growing up. So our thing was always quick game, get the ball, make your pre-read and then get the ball out of your hands. So I think it's just kind of like stuck with him as he's gotten older. Um, and, and I mean, thank God that, you know, it's worked out and it got us to this point. And now, uh, Jimmy Doherty and them got a uh, got a you know they can handle all that stuff and I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. <laughs> okay, let's all right. So let's talk about a little bit his relationship with his teammates and obviously and then we're going to get to the recruitment and everything going forward. But uh, he and Burnett obviously came in, didn't start uh, at uh, Servite, but obviously came there uh, midway through. To Tora McMillan, just talk a little bit about those guys. You know, Jacob Manu, how close are they? Because it certainly looks like they definitely connect on another level. Yeah, it's and, and you know, what I mean, like even kind of right now, I'm, I'm going it through through it with my 14 year olds. 14 is, is hard in the sense that every year the kids, the changeover is hard only having one year with them. Right. Um, but it's, you know, what I mean, like kind of just building that bond, going on trips, long road trips, traveling to go play in games kind of creates that bonding um, that crosses over to the field when you get on the field. So my thing is I, I, we try to build connection outside of the field. And then the stuff on the field is going to take care of itself. But for us at the Buckeyes, you know, we try to, you know, we try to create a family atmosphere 
off of the field and then everything on the on the field to take care of itself so we do a lot of things based around food eating um always seems to bring people together um but then traveling together they traveled we traveled quite a bit for seven on seven uh, for tackle and then you know we still had them in high school too so the weird thing is when they got to high school I have a seven on seven elite travel team that, you know, they all played on. So they were all on that team again. And that just further built the bonds that they already had. And, and I think it's carried over to today now um, at Arizona. What kind of players are, is Arizona getting with uh, T-Mac, Kean Burnett and uh, Jacob Manu? Um, well, you know, I think T-Mac and, and, and Kean, it's, it's obvious. You just look at them and, and, you know, you see their size, you see Kean take off his shirt um, and you know what you're going to get. You know, I think Kean it was hard at Servite is because he didn't have a position coach. Right. And, you know, I think now with him being with Pow Pow, you can see, you know, the the, the leaps and bounds that he's made in his development. Um, and he's going to be, you know, I always tell people, Kian's, Kian's an NFL guy. T-Mac, obviously, you see what you're going to get athletically. This guy can jump out of the roof. Um, you know, his ball tracking skills are, are, are phenomenal. But, you know, Jacob is the one that, you know, I had to kind of like push a lot of these, these college coaches on because you can't see, you know, me past his size initially when you see him as a linebacker. Right. But the kid's a ball hawk. He knows, you know, what I mean, like he has a nose for where the ball is going to be. Um, he's once once he gets on the field, he has like he's the old school player. Where he has no regard for his body. He's going to run through everything. You know, this kid's never going to miss a game because of an injury. Um, and just, you know, that's that heart and the willingness that, you know, these kids have. And, you know, I have always had um, right. that that Arizona is getting. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit now. We get into the recruitment uh, aspect here. And when you guys were looking and it becomes apparent that Noah's going to be a Division One quarterback, what were you guys initially looking for before even the scouts came? Well, so, you know, I come from a like a sales environment. So, you know, everything for me is relationship based. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I fell in love. Like we were getting recruited. We had a lot of coaches reaching out to us, talking to us early on. Um, no real offers. You know, I think you got Idaho State. Um you know, going into his freshman year or after his freshman year. But, um, you know, that was based off the fact that my brother was the head, was one of the coaches over there. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, once Coach Fish and them came in and they offered him early on, um, you know, I kind of fell in love with the fact that, you know, he was one of their first offers. But what really made me fall in love is the uh, the attention to detail that they had, you know, like right. the letters that my, my wife and them were getting, um, the calls, the texts to us, the, the, like them including us in the whole process. And I want to say, like, the weekend before Noah committed, we came down there just on our own, just as a family, to come see the, the campus and just drive around. And uh, and we had a talk with Noah. Noah and I had, a, like, a man-to-man -man talk. And, um, you know, he, he wanted to wait in the whole commitment process uh, to see what schools came in. And I kind of was just blunt with him. I told him that, hey, you know, um, you know, loyalty is everything for us. But, you know, this is like a girl that you have a crush on, you know. Um, and they go out and date three or four of your friends and then they want to come back and be your wife. You know, I was right. like, that's not the case. Arizona was their first, you know what I mean? They fell in love with you early. They're here. They're loyal. Go where you're wanted. Go where you're, you know what I mean? Like go where they're recruiting you and they're going to be loyal to you. You're one of their first guys. You know what I mean? Loyalty is everything. And you know, it's held true. You know, he came, I told him to pray about it. The next morning he came back. He's like that, you know, I want to come into Arizona. And it's probably been one of the best decisions in our life. You know what I mean? Like everything that they've done, um, from the day they recruited us to today, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed as how the way they treat us, um, the way they text us, handle like on our birthdays. You know, we're getting texts from these guys, and you know that just it's not, even as like it's not even a coach thing. You know, that just shows you the kind of humans that they are. You know, in general, it's like this is really who they are. What really stuck stuck out to me, we were interviewing Sterling Lane a while back, another highly rated kid out of uh, Southern California, and he said what really stuck out to him was that Arizona recruited him harder after he committed than all before he committed. He said, you know, when you're at an Oaks Christian or, you know, at a, a, a Servite, you're used to having high-level players around, and he said sometimes, you know, the recruitment kind of falls off. He says, they were talking to me more after I committed. He said that was that was unique. Was there some of that with you guys? Yeah, well, in the sense, yeah, they were still calling in times. I was like, coach, you don't have to keep calling us, man. We're, we're all in. But that was the case with T-Mac. You know what right. I mean? Like everybody, once T-Mac committed Oregon, a lot of people fell off. And you can see it in, in all the articles T-Mac talks about is, you know what I mean? Like Arizona never fell off. You know, they, they held true to recruiting him. They held true to who they are. And again, you know, that's just a testament to Coach Fish. And that's really who these guys are. You know what I mean? Like Amber in them. And you know what I mean? Like all the wives, coaches' wives. Like, you know what I mean? They're still getting people. Like my wife and I were still getting texts from them and, you know, we're already all in and we're there. Our kids have been there and they're still getting 
texts from the family and uh you know birthday wishes even my son I, like i saw something on instagram my my youngest just started his first day of high school monday and you know amber was on the uh on one of the comments like you know just like well i, I forgot what, you, what she said but you know that goes a long way this is really who these guys are when they say it's a family atmosphere it really it really is a family atmosphere Okay, Les, before we let you go, what are you just looking for the next four or five years just from your son, just, you know, just as a proud father? What are you looking for? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for him to do it. You know, I mean, everything he's always done, you know, just be Noah, um, you know, continue to work hard, continue to be the smartest one on the field and just get coached. You know what I mean? And then when your time comes, you know, uh, God willing, you know, you can deliver. And, you know, I, I have no uh, no qualms. I know that for, you know, once it's time comes on the field that he'll be able to do what he got recruited to do. Les Fafita, father of Noah Fafita, real quick before we let you go, we got to talk a little bit about your wife. Again, she a uh, um, little camera shy, like you said, but just kind of talk about the unit that you two move in because just watching you guys from afar, watching in Twitter, it seems like you guys have a really special dynamic. Yeah, so she's everything I'm not. So pretty much everything, that all the great qualities you see in Noah, um, brain, you know what I mean, like personality, That's a lot of that, that's her. Right. Um, you know, all the goodness, you know, in, in Noah is, is, is her. Um, you know, I'm more the outgoing, um, hard coaching, you know I mean? I coach a lot, you know, we coach our kids hard out here, but we love them hard too. But, you know, she's, I was just telling her today, like she woke up, she went to bed at like, like two o'clock last night, 2 AM, got up this morning to cook, you know, my, my, my youngest breakfast and then take a picture of him for his first day, official day of school. And, you know, that's just who she are. She is, you know, she's more behind the scenes and doesn't want credit for everything, but you know, a lot of this stuff and definitely what we have as a family is because of her. Les, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Love to have you back on again in the future. It means the world to me, my man. I appreciate it, Mike. Thank you for everything. All right, Les Fafita, father of a U of A quarterback, Noah Fafita, joining us here on the AZ Wildcats podcast. Thanks again, Les. Have a good one. All right, you too. See, and that's something that I love doing about this job is being able to talk with and talk with parents and be able to kind of get that background on what exactly is going on there. And again, if you're on Twitter, if you're on at Ben U of A practices, you can tell that Noah Fafita just gets it. There are certain guys that don't get it. There are certain guys that just get it. Noah Fafita gets it, and a big percentage of that is because of the parents who raised him right there. Now, we're going to talk a bunch about that in depth. Real quick, though, again, DraftKings Sportsbook app, code word PHNX. All right, so you put down a deposit. You can get up to $1,000 in free plays. That's simple, that easy. 21 and up, Arizona only. Got a gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. I love Arizona this year. I think they're uh, over the two and a half wins. And if you think that I'm smart, go in on it. If you don't think I'm smart, go against me. That easy, that simple. Check it out. DraftKings Sportsbook app. Code word PHNX. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about Noah and what he brings to the field. And been out at all the practices. Obviously, I'm up in Tahoe, so I've missed the last couple. But the first thing you notice about this young man is, yes, you do notice that he's shorter. But you also notice that the ball gets out of his hand and the ball gets out of there with authority. You generally don't see that with a freshman. I remember, or I mean, younger players. Heck, I remember when Nick Foles was here and this was when practice was open. And in camp, Nick looked okay, but Nick kind of looked mechanical out there. And that's not anything about Nick, you know, because Nick went on to become a Super Bowl MVP, but it was just an adaptation period. Whereas with Noah, Again, I'm not making him out like he's Joe Montana. Not saying that. I'd love to have that happen, though. But he he's a command out there, and you can tell by watching him, you can tell that the players out there respect him immensely. And a lot of that is because of the command that he does bring out there on the football field. He's got – we talked about this with the Pops just now, but he can make every throw. He can make – he can move around. And the height – you know, no matter what he's listed at, the height really, again, everybody wishes they were six foot three, but the height isn't something that is a that big of a deterrent because you don't see a lot of balls getting knocked down at the line. He, again, he's able to throw the ball. Kobe Thiel makes a great point. When Noah throws the ball, it's just different. His mechanics are awesome, and he has a rocket for an arm, and that's the thing. A lot of times when you get guys who are maybe a little bit shorter, you're Kellen Moore's, who, by the way, if it turns out to be Kellen Moore in college, I'll be more than okay with that. But there's a limit to what they can do as far as being able to throw the ball. The, the outs, you know, are limited. You can't necessarily stretch the ball downfield the way that they could, the way that some others can. And Noah can certainly do that. Now, with uh, people are asking, you know, what is the arrival date? When when could we see Noah on the field? We're going to get to that in just a second. But two things. First. 
PH, uh, the uh, checkout Four Peaks Brewery. It's the official brew of PHNX Sports. Very good stuff. Four Peaks. It's only getting bigger. You can go on the website and check it out and check out FOCO. FOCO is um, the official, the number one officially merchandised brand for everything out there from hats to memorabilia. Anything you want, FOCO's got. Like we've talked about, our guy Brandon Sanders got his uh, cool straw hat from there. Check it out, FOCO.com. Now, the arrival for Noah Fafita is going to be interesting because in camp, and Jason Shear and I talked about this quite a bit, that if you were at camp or you were at practice, you didn't know anything about any of the quarterbacks. You would say that Noah Fafita was the best quarterback out there. And because for a lot of the reasons that we put, he's got the strongest arm and gets rid of the ball really quickly. But his time is going to come right now. That's Jaden Delora's shot because Jaden Delora is – the Pac-12 freshman of the year, and a lot of times guys are just gamers, and I think we're seeing that with Delora, that he's a gamer when the lights come on. But make no mistake, when Fafita gets out there, you kind of get the sense that he might not ever come off the field again. And that's just because of the confidence that he uh, that he brings in out there. I think that and, – and you look at it, and we'll get to the rest of these comments here in just a second – Best case scenario is JDL goes off and is absolute stud, goes pro, and defeat, uh, uh, Fafita starts as a redshirt freshman next year. I'd have no problem with that one whatsoever, Kobe. Now, with uh, with Fafita, though, it also helps that he has such a strong connection with this wide receiver unit right here in that we've everybody knows about T-Mac. Um, arguably the best wide receiver in the nation last year. His pop, or, uh, Noah's dad broke down what makes him so unique. But then you've got a Kean Burnett, Chester Burnett's ex U of A great Chester Burnett's son, who also is probably an NFL player. And uh, Noah's dad made a great point that he didn't have a tight end coach last year, or uh, when he's at Servite. But you look at Kean, and he's just a guy that looks a little bit different. You can't forget about Jacob Manu as well. Comes in a, a very talented kid, a little undersized, but less Fafita vouch for him. And if less Fafita vouch vouches for him, then I'm all in. But make no mistake, no Fafita is going to start at the U of A. And when he does start, like I said, I don't know that he's necessarily going to be coming off the field. So you always hear the adage that nobody can lose their job to injury. That's not true. You can lose your job to injury. It happens all the time. Now, I think Kobe's uh, uh, thought right there is the best idea. But, again, we're going to play this one out. We'll see how this one works. But right now, I'm all in on Noah Fafita, and I thought it was fantastic what he said about Jed Fish and just the family atmosphere that he has inspired throughout. But, again, I'm going to wrap it up real quick. But, again, got to pay the bills. The DraftKings Sportsbook app, code word PHNX. All right, here's the deal. You can put down a deposit and you get up to a thousand dollars in free plays. 21 and up, Arizona only. If you got a gambling problem, call 1 800 Next Step. Again, I love the over two and a half wins right now for the Cats. I think that they are going to, uh, I think they're probably in that four or five win range. It's only getting better from there. Hop in there, get that bet in right. And because again, you got football, you got basketball coming up right around the corner. So check it out. 21 and up, Arizona only. Like I said, gambling problem call 1 800 next step. And again, David H says JDL Fafita, then eventually Dorman looking bright at QB. We can't forget about Braden Dorman. Braden Dorman, highly ranked kid. Um, and it goes to show you too that Jet Fish is recruiting guys who not only are good, they have a lot of character and they have a lot, and there is a lot of there is a lot of, uh, you know, talent there and guys that aren't uh, scared to compete against each other. So great call right there, David. But a big, big tip of the cap to Les Fafita. Again, he raised a special kid right there. Mama Fafita, we thank you as well. Um, Noah, if you're out there, you know, big things. Keep working hard. We will be back with you tomorrow for everybody that contributed. I can't thank you enough from Omar to David, to Kobe, to Pugs and Hugs. Great name right there. Appreciate you all. We will be back with you tomorrow. As always, thanks so much for listening to the AC Wildcats podcast.